What's going on, YouTube? Time for another recap. Another uh, slow morning. So from our premium Discord and our trading services, we called for a short open to a reversal long. Coming into the end of July here, the sentiment is generally bullish during an election year as well. Uh, that usually demonstrates a lot of dip by opportunity, especially leaning into the end of the month. I don't know if we're going to end the month green. If we're just going to have some shootout, blowout day tomorrow and the next day. Uh, you know, we'll have to see what we got. Two days trade left on Wednesday. Yeah, I don't know about that. But the end of the week here could be a bullish one. So let's get into why. So I posted here on X. Um, I said that we have some nice range short potential. We got two anchors right here not catching up, right? So let's go over those anchors. And I hit both those targets this morning. Um, we posted them up on Qs here. And uh, that's it, that's just one and done. It's a pretty easy trade today. So let's take a peek at where those anchors came from, right? So the anchors are coming from yesterday's price action, right? So, let me see here. There we go, sorry about that. Make an adjustment, yesterday's price action anchors. So when you see yesterday's highs on this orange anchor right here, and then you see the last low, of yesterday, that is where we get those anchors from. So when I seen pre-market and after hours have no tag on my my top anchor right here, we needed a magnet. We need a back test of that anchor before it can move higher, right? Confirmation. So we're up here in pre-market. We pushed higher, higher, higher. So I told my uh, my group, so we're just going to push high, scam up here in pre. We're going to flop at the open, and we're going to have some short opportunities down to the anchors, and then some. And that's pretty much what we got. So we had an opening morning uh, range short is what I wanted to see. A little pop at the start, no big deal. And then came up to up pre-market high, right? And then we had a beautiful lower high consolidation break. But let's take a peek at our oscillation indicators. Look at the MAC here. We have a small buy wave, small buy wave. Look at the histograms down here. Huge sell wave, way bigger sell wave. The sellers were in control during the pre-market force up here, um, even though it was just scamming the price action up. Sellers were still in control. Now, we see that a lot in the algo-driven movements, and that's why we use back-testing magnets a lot of the time, because those are going to show up for you in the long term, that's for sure. Um, so with the breakdown here through the morning, into a little bit later morning we're not even to afternoon yet but i'm still calling for most likely a long into the end of the day and we wanted a short open and that's pretty much what we got so um with that being said that's where i got those two targets literally that's it i, I wish it was harder i wish trading was harder i really do but honestly if we got a metric like this where you see no price action after hours no price action pre-market hitting this anchor it needs a back test right look at the, look at this draw right here all the way down shied it at the open big pop to screw over the chase shorts wait to the pre-market high to short which is one of our favorite shorts here at boardroom trading comes down hits anchors and breaks through once the recovery of those set anchors hit you could find another support play on these anchors and the intraday anchors let's talk about those real fast before we get into the next so for the remainder of the day here what i would do is i would move the anchors that have finally been tagged to the respective um plots on today's day trading okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to anchor out high low that's it that's simple and what this tells me is we have an abrupt impulse move from the bottom huge through our live high anchor this guy right here this guy needs a back test as well so once we've seen this anchor come all the way up and break over this general area would be my short well what would tell me here in the short well i drop the time frame down a little bit it's like the minute chart now i'd start looking at the max because we trade off the minute and five minute but right now i would use a five minute anchor uh the one minute works well we didn't we didn't get a tag here too i, I just generally like the fives this is a no tag it's very close but it's a no tag so when we had that super abrupt crazy move we left not only a gap intraday you see right here which i'll get into as well that's a big back test confirmation for the day we had a macd on the minute telling us what to do here so it blew through the anchor and there's no signs of stopping it look at the mac the mac the, the, the lines aren't crossed to the downside so you gotta wait for the cross right we're about 11 20. we're getting a little shake right and what is generally that happens is it starts the roll pushes up and you got to find the lower high confirmation to back test on the scalp right if it's going to come back down what i generally like to do is is wait for the long back test uh, on these anchors and scalp them for this long but right now we're looking for a back test from the impulse so this impulse move all the way up should come back down to the gap and the anchor when it's ready to let loose now of course you got a couple different demons here to to face and this is what i would do off the five minute chart to give myself some extra confirmation right we have a high low range and this is where i use fibs a lot of the time at the open where the low 
and high of prior would be set right here, right? Now you notice right away from the fib videos, if you watch our videos, you know the 1618 in the back test on is amazing, right? We're gonna get into this as well on QQQ, the opposite way where I pick the top. So remember this. Now, when we come into the 1618, high, low, we got the fib box, boom, boom. We pointed it to the downside. What did we see? A fail of golden pocket, breakdown, and what else do we see up here? No data on the fib range, okay? So we have no data still fill. That means we could potentially still press higher to a high of day, over or close to 467.89 before we roll back down to this anchor, which inevitably is the back testable anchor where you want to run short on, right? The five minute on the Mac is not quite ready to turn over. So I'm not interested in that trade because we don't have a moving averages cross. We have a very bullish sequence where we could put in yet another small or three small waves by the time the moving averages finally cross and catch up like that on the Mac, right? So this open data box right here still needs to be filled up and we still should hit the zero fib at least one more time or close to before it wants to come back down. Now, the best case scenario is watching the breakdown up here, right? Resistance area comes down back in hits anchor, right? So let's make believe this is all the way over here pops breaks and hits second anchor. Okay. So that's what that's going to look like. So you're going to want to see that the price action roll up, boom, boom, crack, break down, hold under 467.89 and come down, hit target one, which is this continuation anchor T1. Then it's going to bounce a little bit and hopefully give you a breakdown or it might just wash through. It doesn't matter. This is just the next confirmational watch, right? We don't predict the uh, crystal ball that heavy. And we come back down into the second anchor, right? So you're going to see it most likely give you one of those bad boys. And those short targets also become long scalp entries. But right now, we're not quite there. So that's why I, uh, why and how I like to use Fibonacci together with Anchor View Apps with some price action because this high-low price action right here tells me that we got no data, right? We got nothing. So even if that data is just that little piece from the candle's high, we still have no data up here. So we do have an opportunity to come back up there. So speaking of which, getting into these Fib algos, Friday, let's get into the rest of the uh, move here. Friday, right? We had this nasty oh, pre-market algo. What's going on here? Right here. And then we had a chop day, right? Just didn't do a whole lot, which we're ready for. That's fine. But this Fibonacci is something you never want to pay attention or never forget about. You always want to pay attention to it uh, because again, this is a scenario where you see an algo blip where that wick gets created in pre-market. We hold a golden pocket right here, pushes back up and then flops and does nothing because it's a fail breakout Friday. That's fine. But what does that leave us with? Well, the 1618 has not been tagged on this upside Fibonacci, right? So, well, next trade day, this is obviously going to be a very valid algo to watch. We move into Oh man, it picked the very top of the day. How hard? Yes, that clean. It was literally that easy. So that algorithm right here, again, pre-market Friday's long wick pushed up this morning at open. And I said it would probably get to that 1618 because that's our usually our target. Breaks out of the 100 Fibbit pre-market, holds up. Dink, right to the penny, 1618. Boom, boom, right? Perfection. And then you get the break all the way back down. Then when do you find? A golden pocket, right? Or the zero fib. So golden pocket and zero fib down here. It's back back up. You can see it. And look, golden pocket top tag. And what does that mean? Well, nothing much. Actually, this lower high could potentially sell off very cleanly um, into later uh, to the bottom here, but we might need data, right? I'm just not interested in it for the rest of the day. We made our opening gains. Uh, we're not we're not interested until we get some of those bigger markers. We got Powell this week. We have we just we are stacked this week for news. So um, we're gonna wait for that to get to that continuation down. So if we do see a big panic right here, it usually needs a psychological driver for catalyst, and we just don't have that right now. We don't have any big PCE data, Powell data, CPI. We don't have that that fear, hype, and greed creation to actually move this price action down, right? But but we also, uh, this box has also been tagged already in golden pocket. So we're not worried about any of this golden pocket. If it trends underneath the golden pocket, that's the continuation to target 458. Okay. So our opening morning short call to long worked out pretty well, but now we need to see continuation or confirmation, right? Because we have a couple pretty big dangerous levels here for con confirming uh, what we want to see. So if we back up a little bit here, just on the five day, five minute, you can see the uh, trend, right? And I got a couple other longer term fibs here. You can see where that golden pocket is way up here and uh, 50 SMA, 10 SMA up there. And I just don't know if she's quite ready, you know, to bounce it. We got that 100 EMA bounce back here a few days back. And then we had two days now above the 100 EMA so far. And we are creating higher lows with these two days. Um, 
so far, right? We need the confirmation to close, but uh, right now we're still looking at that just downside. And what I said earlier, which I said I'd come back to is an intraday gap. And I'll give you this one for free right here. There is a gap on the QQQ that was put in on the minute chart. I think well, it might've been a mistake. We'll see, because we don't use trading for this reason alone, because we don't have the data set for it. Might've been, should have been. Right there, that is closed on, let's go back and take a peek real fast on trading view. Cause we had a gap finder on the minute tell us that there was one right there. Yeah, yeah, 465 dead nuts. And that were that that's where we could see a um you know a back test on it again. I probably wouldn't trust this one as much, but getting used to a lot of new monitors here that I just set up here this last weekend. So bear with me. Yeah, it is rated 465. That's the one. So this little gap right here, let's see if I'm just missing it. Because my eyeballs. Yeah, no, that's it. So this one registered as a no gap here on thinkorswim. Yeah, but gapped on um Trade view. So we're going to forget about that one. We're not going to care about that gap at all because trade view sucks if you don't have that data set up. Now, no big deal. Now coming back to back testing, right? So we come back, we put in this huge monster like 200 point move all the way back up at NQ. Comes into the consolidation. What do you do next? Well, you're going to wait for the moving averages and the confirmation to catch up. What does that look like? The oscillation. That's right. So we're going to go back to the five minute chart. And this is what you want to look for for the rest of the day. You're going to look for the opportunity to stay above in your channel. So if you got that 50 on, which you gotta pay attention to the half of RSI, right? So I always like to put a line through my RSI chart because um, holding down on the downside, holding up on the upside helps with trend, right? So when I see the opportunity to bounce back into the upper RSI, I'm looking for it to hold the halfway point of the oscillation indicator to hold that support and go higher. Same with the MACD. If it comes up and holds that zero line, we have trend goes higher. What else do we have? Moving averages, right? So we got the 666 and 200, which are both tested today. And we're looking for more upside. And that was our general outlook was further long, right? Because we do have an opportunity to come back down or back down, back up and test some of these moving averages from the daily chart. So last but not least, let's get into the daily and the final piece of the move. We're going to delete this fib and run off this one. So this is our second fib we used in the premium group today. Oh, we might not be able to hit it here because the chart in TOS is doing TOS things, not letting me click anything. There we go. We'll activate this down even though we just duplicated it. Awesome. TOS, man. And the misclicks. All right. So this engulfing Fibonacci day is what I want you guys to pay attention to the most. This is where the long thesis comes in for the rest of the weekend, all the data. This piece of the pie, right? Oh, this is engulfing, not yesterday's trade action, but the day prior, okay? Friday to Thursday. So Thursday's big candle is the biggie. Anything above the golden pocket, right? Yeah, of this candle will set us up to a push, as you can see, all the way as high as 475. Yes, the gap tag, the actual gap tag. We could actually get up there. Um, and that's predominantly based off news. This is not a prediction. I'm not going to sit here and crystal ball all the news coming up this week, but I'm going to give you these Fibonacci levels because if you have them, let's make them real not confusing here. This is the high low of Thursday. Okay. High of Thursday on the top of the hundred low pointed to the upside, which gives us one, six, one, eight at four seventy five and change. Okay. And what we need to see as a continuation above four sixty eight. Okay, because that's the 100 fib. So we tapped in this morning again, right there at Thursday's highs. Now we're in lower high scenario, but what happens? We're looking at over under, right? What really needs to happen here? We need to break out of Thursday's highs, hold Thursday's highs and come back towards moving averages and target of 475.60. So if you see this mother truck a close above 468, be damn sure that we are coming up to that 476 uh, potential here and potentially coming into that gap. So again, let's pop back to the daily one last time. That's the last prediction for what that news comes in. Again, this is not like a trade prediction. This is not trade calling uh, like I usually do for a lot of my breakdowns and why we're doing them. But these two gap downs, none has been, none have been tested yet. So when you get a gap and go, and then you can't even loop back up and test to that gap, the secondary one has a much better chance to come up and at least test the gap. I don't care about the fill. It just has to test it, right? So we can see uh, some continuation long above. It needs to be above, my friends, 468. And that push above Thursday's highs will net us a back test into that 10 SMA, 50 SMA, 476 gap touch. Now, again, still think lower after that. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. But this is the current trade of the week. And this is what I'll be looking for to continue into these gaps. And that'll be it.
So hope you guys have a good trade day for the rest. Be safe. We'll see you on the next.